hi guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is abiola and in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to cut and sew a very fitted female pant i'm excited and i know you're excited as well and in the course of this tutorial i would also be teaching you how to take accurate body measurement to achieve this exact type of pant without wasting so much of our time let us head into the tutorial proper the first step in the making of this pant is to cut out the quantity of fabric that you would need and you may be wondering how do i know the quantity of fabric that i would need and you have to bring out your writing materials to calculate that and you're going to write out your hip circumference first mine is 41 inches and here is how i took that measurement i went to the widest part of my hip and i took the measurement round the next step is to divide what we measured by four remember we have four parts of a trouser so we're going to divide that measurement by four and what i have there is 10.25 now the allowance we'll be adding to this trouser is one inch so i'm going to add one inch to this 10.25 and that's going to be 11.25 now we have to include our crotch extension and to get your crotch extension you have to divide your hip circumference by 16 and what i have there 41 divided by 16 gives me 2.56 i'm now going to approximate that to 2.6 and i'm going to add that 11.25 we got earlier plus 2.6 and that is going to give me 14 inches approximately 14 inches basically so i'm going to you know use this to cut out my fabric on fold so i'm going to bring out my fabric at this point and i'm going to go ahead to fold it into two note that since you're cutting two parts of the front part that 14 you times it by two and it will give you 28 that's to cut for both the um the two sides of the front so if i measure it now you'll see that on fold what i'm getting is 14 inches so that will enable me to cut out the two sides of the front um trouser pattern what i am going to do at this point is to cut off the topmost part of this pattern this part phrase is and i do not want to include that so the next step will be to take um half inch seam allowance at the top remember this half inch seam allowance is something we are going to use to join the waistband this trouser is going to be having a waistband so a 0.5 inch seam allowance is very important to help us join the trouser to the waistband after doing that the next step is to note how wide we want our waistband to be for me i always love 1.5 inches i feel like it gives the best fit ever you can use two you can use one for me i would be using 1.5 inches and i'm going to place that 1.5 inches directly on the starting line the place i'm pointing at so i'm going to place that 1.5 inches on that line and that's how we're going to be taking all our trouser measurement the next step is to go ahead to mark my waist to hip or the hip point as well as the crotch depth in order to do that note the widest part of your hip you can go ahead to tie a rope on that point and measure from your waist to the widest part of your hip mine is 10 inches to measure the crotch depth now get this tool this tool is not the right type of tool for this it has foam on top let it be a fully wooden stool okay so measure from your waistline to where this tool stops please ask someone to take this measurement for you for me mine is 11 inches there are other methods but the sitting on the stool method is what i use now let's input our measurement i'll go ahead to mark my hip point which is 10 inches and i'll go ahead to mark my crotch depth which is 11 inches i'll mark them again 10 and 11 and i'll proceed to connect them into a straight line basically the next step is to mark the tie line and i usually come down by three inches from my crotch depth to mark my tie line which implies i'll add three to 11 and i'll mark 14 inches as my tie line the next step is to go ahead to mark my waist to knee and that is 22.5 okay so i'm going to go ahead to mark 22.5 inches as my knee line and now the trouser length is 43.5 inches okay so i'm going to go ahead to mark that at this point and i would also rule that into a straight line the remaining one inch will serve as my hemming allowance okay now on the hip point line i'm going to divide my hip circumference by four 
41 divided by 4 is 10.25 but I'm going to add one extra inch seam allowance to that and I'm going to be marking 11.25 from that one inch allowance half an inch will be used to stitch the crotch area and half will be used to stitch the side seam now the same thing we marked on our crotch line which is 11.25 i'm going to go ahead and mark the same thing on my waistline and i'll connect that with a ruler now it is time to calculate our crotch extension which we've already calculated at the beginning of this video all you have to do is to divide your hip circumference by 16 41 divided by 16 is approximately 2.56 which is what i went ahead to mark at that point now to draw my crotch curve i'm going to come out from this point by one inch and go up by two inches and i'll connect the points together you can use your free hand you can use a curve driller if you have one but i'm going to be using my free hand at this point okay so the next step now is to divide our waist circumference by four my waist circumference is 31 31 divided by four gives me 7.75 i'm going to go to that point now and mark 7.75 i will be adding that to this trouser very important i'm going to add one inch extra allowance for that and i'm going to proceed to add one extra inch for seam allowance remember half inch will be used to stitch the crotch area and half inch will be used to stitch the side i'm going to go ahead now to connect the points using my curved ruler the straightest part basically you can even use a ruler to be honest now remember the calculation we did at the beginning where i got 13.85 okay that is the measurement of the crotch area like the full width of the crotch area just divide that measurement by two what i have is 6.9 so i'm going to measure 6.9 just to you know divide the trouser into two equal halves to enable even distribution of the measurement the next important step is to take your round tie measurement make sure it's very fitted my round tie measurement is 25 inches 25 inches divided by 2 gives me 12.5 and to that 12.5 i'm going to be adding my one inch seam allowance which will give me 13.5 inches now we're going to divide that 13.5 inches equally on each side of the line 13.5 inches divided by 2 gives 6.75 so i'm going to place that 6.75 on each side of the line that is why we say even distribution of the measurement so i'm going to go ahead at this point now to mark 6.75 on this side and i would connect that i would also go ahead to mark 6.75 on the other side and i would connect that as well after connecting the point the next step is to take my knee circumference my knee circumference is 19 19 divided by 2 gives me 9.5 and to that 9.5 i am going to be adding one extra inch for seam allowance and that's going to make it 10.5 that 10.5 is all we're going to distribute on each side of the line so 10.5 divided by 2 gives me 5.25 on each side of the line so on this line i'm going to proceed to mark 5.25 on this side of the knee line and i would proceed to mark the same thing 5.25 on the other side and i will proceed to connect the points after connecting the points because this is a straight pant i would go ahead to mark the same thing on the knee line okay 5.25 other side and 5.25 on this side as well because i want it to be a straight pant okay so i'm going to go ahead to mark them in a way that i'll be able to connect them into a straight line okay so i'm going to connect the points now and yeah i'm going to go ahead to cut out because we are basically done with the front trouser pattern i'm excited and i know you are too now let's move on to the back pattern okay now i would remove the part that already has the markings okay now to know the amount of fabric you are going to need for the back pattern okay you are going to bring back your calculation and add four extra inches to that you'll find out why in the course of the tutorial just add four inches to what you got initially mine is 18 inches also you need to ensure that the fabric you're going to use to cut out the back pattern is longer by about one inch to 1.5 inches just for confirmation purposes we can see that the back pattern is about 18 inches on fold now i'm going to go ahead to place my front pattern on the back pattern whilst ensuring that i have two inches here and two inches on the other side okay 
and i'm also ensuring that i have excess fabric at the top okay so now let's begin because our back is not straight okay i'm going to be going in from this point by two inches now that two inches we took at this side we have to put back that two inches at the other end so i'm gonna have to extend the lines and i'm going to put back that two inches at this side this is just going to allow the trousers to fall at the right side that means the trousers seems to fall at the right side so i'm going to go ahead now to also um, go up from this point by one inch just to give room for the bomb bomb okay i like to use one inch and whenever i use more than one inch it's just too high at the back so i'm just, just going to mark one inch and i'm going to connect the point to the other point on the hip line i'm also going to come out by two inches on the crotch line i'll also come out by two inches now i'll proceed to connect the points okay with the straightest part of my curved ruler now i'm going to go ahead to extend the crotch line okay on that crotch line i'm going to go ahead to mark two inches just to give room for the bomb bomb basically okay so on that line i'm going to go down by 0.5 inches just to give room for the bomb bomb this is just to give space for the bomb bomb to see too now I'll proceed to connect the point together just watch carefully how i connect my point and please connect yours exactly as i've connected mine okay after that i'm going to proceed to add zipper allowance to this because we need zipper allowance and my zip is going to be at the back okay so um i'm going to measure where i want my zip to stop and i marked eight inches guys do not be like me you stand because i had to now use the small crotch allowance at that point to fix my zip to that 10 inch point so um i'm going to mark one one inch for my zipper allowance so i'm going to mark the one inch properly and connect the point so my zipper allowance is basically one inch on the knee line i'm going to go ahead to mark one inch and also at the hemline i'm also going to proceed to mark one inch okay i would mark that one inch in a way that it will enable me to connect the point in a straight like manner and i'm going to go ahead to just connect the point after connecting the point as shown i'm going to go ahead to connect from the crotch line to the knee line from that back crotch line to the knee line just like you see me doing now the next step is to carefully cut out as shown now the next step is to place the back patterns right sides facing each other and i will proceed to go ahead to mark my seam allowance the front pattern so you place them right sides facing each other basically i'm going to mark my 0.5 inch seam allowance round so that when i head to my sewing machine i'll take it in accurately one important tip do not stitch to the end so i'm going to stop about one inches to the end whilst stitching okay i'm also going to place the front pattern right sides facing each other and i'll proceed to mark my 0.5 inch seam allowance like i said i'm going to stop stitching about one inches to the end of the crotch area you'll find out why in the course of this tutorial i've gone ahead to stitch the front pattern can you see and i've also gone ahead to stitch the back pattern like i said i stopped about one inches to the end same thing for the back pattern i have stitched and i stopped about one inches to the end you'll find out why okay before i head over to my sewing machine i'm going to place the both of them right sides facing each other now i'm going to just you know mark my 0 0.5 inch seam allowance before i head over to my sewing machine after marking this i'm also going to mark my dart before i head over to my sewing machine because i'm going to be taking in my dart before i stitch the sides in order to mark my dart i'm going to divide my nipple to nipple measurement or bust span by two mine is seven seven divided by two is 3.5 so i marked that i would also mark that again at this point 3.5 or starting from the midpoint too so i'm going to you know rule that into a straight line the length of my dart is five inches so i noted the five inches okay so i'm taking a one inch dart so on each side of the line i'm going to mark half an inch half here and half at the other end and i'm going to connect the points to form my that i'll do the same thing on the other side as well i would you know mark 3.5 inches and like i did before i'll take half an inch on both sides of the line i would also mark this 3.5 inches just to get a straight line the length of that remains five inches and i'll go ahead to connect 
the point together and that is my dart now for the back the back that is not as straight as the front dart so you have to put that in consideration the back that is a bit slant so i'm going to mark 3.5 inches first i'll go ahead to mark that again make sure you follow the slant it is slanty so make sure you keep marking the 3.5 inches after which you will go ahead to connect the point into a straight line take half an inch on both sides the length of the dart remains five inches basically so you know connect the point i would also do the same thing for the last part i was just not sure that on camera you just know what to do having marked the dart i'm going to fold this into two on my sewing machine and stitch on that line and that is how you take in your dart just stitch on the line basically After marking my dart, I'm going to proceed to stitch the side using the 0.5 inch seam allowance to the end. Then to the inseam side, I would also stitch that from beginning to the end. I would also stitch the other leg of the trouser and the side. Okay, and here is what I have when I was done. I've stitched the side using 0.5 inch seam allowance. I've stitched the inseam area and I've stitched the other end. Okay, I have also taken in my dart and see how they look. They look so, so good. Okay. So so the next step is to close in this part so all you have to do is to open that part up you know open the seams open them wide this way so we're going to go ahead to stitch this part just like this just to close that part up just stitch it down you're going to see the effect it's going to have it's going to be very very straight and very you know laid you can easily iron that part when the seams are open so go ahead and stitch here is an up close view of what it looks like and let me flip it to the right side so that you see how equal it looks can you see how it looks like in front it's not one side is not you know down one side is not up everything aligns perfectly now let's cut our waistband your waistband should be as long as your waist circumference my waist circumference is 31 as you know then you're going to go ahead to add extra two inches you know we have a zipper allowance to be one inch on one side one inch on one side so that's two inches so what i'm supposed to cut out is 33 inches but i just like to add overage because an overage is not bad okay for the length of the waistband the length of the waistband we earlier stated is 1.5 inches and i'm going to be adding about 0.5 to 0.75 stitching allowance to that so what i'm going to be having is either 2 inches or 2.25 depending on what i add let me go ahead to cut off this rough edge first okay the next step is to bring an interfacing of choice mine is this chest gum what they call chest gum in the local market and i'll measure 1.5 inches on it so i'm going to snip it at that 1.5 inch point with my scissors and i'm going to cut it out this one is one of the easiest interfacing you can cut it's just you know once you snip it and you drag it it's going to just cut leaving half inch at the top area i'm going to head over to my ironing table to iron it properly i will also iron my zipper allowance i'll iron it open when i head over to my ironing table so guys i have gone ahead to iron the interfacing on the waistband and i've also folded it in half okay after folding in half i still see a bit of excess at the point so i'm going to go ahead to cut it off very very quickly now let's fix our waistband in order to do that the first thing you need to do is to bring this and i'm going to open the zipper allowance area you can use a razor blade or whatever you have just open it up then head over to your sewing machine to also back stitch that point when you open it now i'm going to place them right sides facing each other just like i'm showing you let me just cut off this excess yeah i'm going to place them right sides facing each other and i'm going to pin them let me just throw this in at this point if you enjoyed watching this tutorial or if you are enjoying the tutorial please hit the subscribe button you know like drop me comments below i really appreciate all those gestures so after pinning everything down i'm going to proceed to stitch you know that on that 0 0.5 inch seam allowance i'm going to stitch round and here is what i have when i was done stitching mine everything is looking good like i said okay as you can see so the next step now is to do a stitch in a ditch method it's a very beautiful method that i always use for my waistband okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to fold this thing this way whilst pushing the allowance up or the allowance should be inside so that it's very neat so you're going to fold this way and you're going to stitch from the front so i'm going to pin down to show you how it should be 
so i'm going to pin at this point so you are stitching from the front too but you are you keep folding the back and you keep stitching from the front you are stitching in the ditch in the front i don't know i'm going to still show you with my scissor sha so that you see what i mean okay so i'm going to go ahead to pin this point again so the way when we pin from the front if you notice they also hold the back so you are stitching in that ditch round for our pins to hold the back you should know that when you stitch from the front the back is going to be held properly if you fold it properly okay so go ahead guys and do the procedure round keep folding the waistband but you keep stitching from the front okay so here's what the insides look like when i was done as you can see it looks really really neat now let me show you how the front looks like i can barely find any stitch in front you cannot find the stitch because it is in the ditch okay so that's basically it guys i am working on a really lovely trouser course where you will see me stitch all those things on the sewing machine and you will also see other methods i use in making trousers because this is just one of many methods at this point i'm just going to go ahead to pin my zipper so that it aligns with the fold that's why i like to iron my zipper allowance so i'm going to go ahead now at this point to pin the zipper pin every angle basically but i'm going to make sure that everything aligns with the zipper allowance fold that i have that my iron made i mean the mark my iron made okay so once i'm done let me just show you how my zipper allowance looks here is what the zip looks like once it is fixed okay just take a look at what it looks like okay go ahead to hem the base of your trouser use any method you want okay you can decide to hem it twice or you can decide to weave then hem or weave and then use your hemming gum to hold it together so that you don't have any seam at that point thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in my next tutorial bye bye